Hello, this is Seth Schaefer of Team Just Cause Robotics, and today we'll be discussing brushless ESCs and motors. I was requested to talk specifically about brushless drive, but I thought it would be beneficial to go over all the relevant features which BL Heli Suite provides. I'll also talk about how to configure both the ESC and transmitter mixing for brushless drive, weapons, or even dual motor weapons using my FlySky FSI 6 transmitter. If all you want to know about is transmitter programming, I'll include a timestamp in the description below that you can jump to for that. Otherwise, Let's jump into why you would even use brushless drive in the first place. So in front of me here, I have a big brushed motor. This is pulled from a Harbor Freight 18 volt drill. A brushless motor that I'm going to be using in my 12 pound bot, but would also probably work for a 30 pound bot drive system. This is the uh, Race Star BR4114 400 kV. And believe it or not, these two motors have roughly equivalent output power ratings. Um, no, this one's not exactly rated, but one can assume it's between 5 and 700 watts. This one can easily draw at up to 6S voltages, which would be 22.2 volts, um, over 25 amps for an output rating of higher than 500 watts. Now for here, I have uh, beetle-sized motors. So this is the drive motor that I use in Division, and the weapon motor I use in Division. This motor has a rated output power that's pretty anemic. Honestly, it only runs at stall currents of a couple amps, whereas this one can take up to 50 amps. So just to nail this home for you, the uh, ES accompanying ESC is soldered onto this motor, but to give you a general idea, 15 and a half ounces of motor, more than 15 and a half ounces of motor. And with nearly the same power, we have 4.95 ounces. This motor was listed as being 141 grams. This one, 2.8 ounces. And this has a gearbox coupled, so it's not a particularly fair comparison, but still 3.1 ounces. I mean, come on. The motor itself is like maybe half of that, but it produces like less than 10% of the power that this guy does. The weight and size of the motors themselves is hardly the start and the end of it because we also have the ESCs to deal with. So this is an ESC that is rated to go up to 3S and it's brushed only, brushed motors only, and it can handle so up to about 12 volts at 60 amps continuous, which is a pretty high current rating, but it can't handle any higher voltages. To get a higher voltage, we have one of these. This is a 40 amp rated brushed ESC that can reverse, so it's meant for a drive system or what have you. So that's 2.2 ounces. This is, I don't know, about 1.2. I mean, the wires are all over the place, so who knows. But 2.2 ounces gets you 24 volts at up to 40 amps with a brushed motor. For brushless, you might see these guys and think, well, that's a pretty equivalent size ESC. It's also about two ounces and it can handle 50 amps, right? But this is not the type of ESC that we're talking about today. This is bullshit. Trying to figure this, fit this in a beetle weight? Ridiculous. No, today we'll be talking about something more like this. These BL Heli 32 ESCs have a firmware and a form factor specifically designed for racing quadcopters. That means that every single gram that is added to this has a meaning and a purpose. And it has an absolutely stupid power density because of that. Less than half the weight for the same current capability of this monstrosity. I mean, look at this, banana for scale. This thing is absolutely a brick of aluminum heat sinking and even this inductor coil is like bigger than half of the PCB of this guy. So I honestly am not an electrical engineer and I couldn't tell you why in particular this design has persisted, but I can only imagine its large thermal mass is for sustained flights of like over an hour in a fixed wing aircraft, whereas we are fighting for three minutes and not even necessarily running at full throttle the whole time. So something like this, perfectly suitable. Over the years in combat robotics, it's become somewhat of a fact that your drive system, 
will be brushed and your weapon system will be brushless. However, it's becoming increasingly common to use brushless for drive as well, since you can get such a ridiculously greater power to weight ratio from any brushless motor than you can from an equivalent size or even just equivalent power rating brushed motor. And these ESCs are part of the reason. You can see they are slimmed down to pretty much the bare essentials and nothing else needed to make your motor run. And they do actually have RGB LEDs on these two. This one just has a red LED, but it's even required in combat robotics to have an indicator light sometimes. So honestly, that's just fine for our purposes as well. The nice thing about these ESCs is they allow brushless motors now to become switch hitters, whereas previously they were limited to use in weapons because you couldn't get their ESCs to actually reverse unless you were using an RC car ESC, which would typically be closer to that gigantic ESC form factor that you saw before. Now you can use these multi-copter ESCs in 3D mode or bi-directional mode, which would, for a quad racer, allow them to fly upside down, but for us allow us to use them as drive motors like we would in an RC car as most brushed ESCs are configured for, but now with brushless as well. So to program these ESCs and unlock their full potential, you need something like this. This exact one was recommended by Robert Cowan, I believe, but you can find, if you just search for a BL Heli USB linker, anything that looks like this and has a three pin connection that connects to these uh, servo plugs will serve the same purpose and work just as well for the most part. Um, I'll switch to an OBS screencast at some point, but just for the sake of being a bit clearer here, um, the software that you're going to want is this. It's called uh, BL Heli Suite, and you can get it from a link I'll include in the description. It'll be to a Google Drive. Um, there's also, if you search for BL Heli Suite download, you'll be linked to a GitHub page, which then in its documentation links to that Google Drive folder. And you just need to make sure you download the appropriate one for your operating system. I believe that there's even a version of this that works on Linux, but it certainly works on Windows and Mac as well. Something important to note, uh, if you're using one of these USB linker things, you actually have to tell it that you're using that. So under select BL Heli 32 interface, you want to make sure you select USB slash COM or COM. All right, I'm going to try my best to do this with only one hand. But So when you get the USB linker, you'll see there is minus, plus, and S. The S stands for signal. Plus is for positive 5 volt. If your ESC has a BEC built into it, usually your red wire will go there. And then minus is where usually the black wire or whatever your darkest color wire will go. This is essentially going to read information from and write information to the ESC in a similar manner to how a receiver would be able to send and receive information. It can send information, in fact, with the receiver for um, telemetry that's built into a lot of these multi-copter ESCs. But for combat robotics purposes, that's generally kind of unnecessary. So you're really only receiving at the receiver end. Um, so this guy, when you first get it, plug it into a computer, whether or not you have your ESC connected or what have you, it'll probably automatically recognize it and download a driver. So connecting to the actual software, you can see down here, if I close the software and open it again, under port, there is nothing. However, I plug in, automatically it's recognized COM3, and now if I click on the read setup button, it's asking me to connect the ESC and power it up. So um, if I had it already powered, it would have recognized it immediately, but I have to actually plug a battery into this for that. So I will do that and retry this through OBS. All right, so I've got the uh, Flycolor 50 amp plugged in right now. I've got the battery plugged in, USB is not plugged in. So I'm gonna close this, open it again. That almost always makes it so it'll connect first time every time. Plug this in. Maximize the window, and now when I hit read setup, it immediately populates and says ESC number one setup read successfully. So read successfully. I don't know why it still thinks it's maximized, because it's not, but whatever. All right, so now you can see I have all these options. And right now in the upper left hand, you can see it says fly weapon. That's because I named this profile. I already uploaded a profile to it. 
So if you don't see all these options right away, it could be because you just don't have the latest firmware on your ESC. That's very easy to remedy. Go down here to Flash BL Heli, click on it. You'll get this window. Click OK. Click Yes. So now it'll probably screw with all your settings. Uh, before you do this, you can go into the ESC setup tab and save the INI file to make sure it doesn't mess up everything and then read from it. So right now everything's messed up. Under e this, you click save, set up to INI before you do that step. I'm just going to do read setup because I already have settings saved. And I want the fly weapon open. Now I have all my settings back exactly as they were before. And I now need to write setup to the ESC. And bam, it's done. And you can see the uh, LED just came on, indicating that it worked because I have the LED control set to on. This has already been programmed. Um, and you see all these different options. This can be very confusing. I'm going to go over all of the important ones one by one. Forgive me, but I'm just going to read these off of my script that I've written out where I've mostly copy pasted and added some notes to what is found on a document that I'll link that is the BL Heli 32 manual. It's slightly out of date, but it's pretty, uh, pretty much covers everything that you need to know about what these different features are with a couple caveats that are explained in a YouTube video series that I also watched that's like 24 minutes long, but I'll distill that information down for you. Okay, so right away up at the top, we have throttle cal enable. This, if disabled, will disable throttle calibration. That is actually something that you definitely want. Once you check, uncheck this, you're going to want to set the minimum throttle to something like 1050, maximum throttle to something like 1950, um, anything below 2000 for this, anything above 1000 for that. And that will make it so that your transmitter will always be able to send a signal within the range of what the ESC can read and the midpoint will be where the midpoint should be at center throttle 1500 microseconds and you will never need to enable throttle calibration for any reason therefore you should turn it off because if you accidentally have your robot powered up while one of your joysticks is not um, it is too high up or not on center or whatever you could have your robot just stop there and ask you to do a bunch of different things with the stick to calibrate it and that's not something you want to have happen in the middle of a fight if you happen to have like a short brownout from a loose wire connection. Next we have ramp up power. This is probably one of the more obvious settings but it does pretty much what it says in the box. You can set this value from 3 to 150 percent. 3 percent to 150 percent that is. Um, this is the maximum power allowed when ramping up at low RPMs during startup. For low RPMs, the maximum power to the motor is limited in order to facilitate detection of low back EMF voltages, which is how the brushless ESC will determine what position the motor is in. Ramp up power also affects bidirectional oper operation, which is when the motor is able to reverse itself like in a drive system, as the parameter is used to limit the power applied during direction reversal. During startup, the actual applied power depends on the throttle input and can be lower than the maximum level set by the ramp up parameter, but the minimum level is a quarter of the max that you're setting. This you can play with, but generally the higher you go, especially higher than 100%, the higher your chance of burning out the motor or ESC. In theory, you can get faster acceleration and spin up times, however. Motor timing. Uh, this is also somewhat ambiguous, but essentially it refers to how far in advance of when the magnet comes in to the uh, vicinity of a coil that the coil is energized. Um, this maxes out at 31 degrees with a minimum of 1 degree, I believe, but it also has an automatic setting. I would recommend that you pretty much just leave it on auto unless you're having problems with the motor starting up, in which case you could set it to the maximum of 31 degrees which will more aggressively apply power before the magnet comes across the coil, but it results in less efficient acceleration. PWM frequency uh, pretty much just refers to how fast communication occurs between the ESC and the motor. Uh, pretty much all motors will benefit from having this as high as possible because it'll just mean that you're getting the signals to the motor faster and more smoothly. So max it out, and if you have problems, then you can lower it from there. Maximum is 48 kilohertz. DMAG compensation. 
DMAG compensation is a feature to protect the motor from stalls caused by long winding demagnetization after time. I'm sorry, long winding demagnetization time after commutation. In other words, residual magnetization of the windings of the coil um, is something that could tend to cause the magnet to be pulled backwards after it passes over being pulled forwards by it being timed correctly. So this is a feature that will protect from motor stalls caused by that problem. Generally, a higher value gives better protection. If DMAG compensation is set too high, maximum power can be somewhat reduced for some motors. So I would just set it to low and not worry about it. Maximum acceleration, set to maximum and move on with your life. Motor direction, this is the important one for drive. Motor direction has like five settings. So there's normal, reversed, bidirectional 3D, bidirectional 3D reversed. Now you might think at first bidirectional 3D or 3D reverse is what you want for drive. That's wrong. You actually want bidirectional soft or soft reverse. The reason for this is because these ESCs are designed for quadcopters and quadcopters will fall out of the sky if their propellers stop. So what bidirectional 3D and 3D reverse do is they actually leave a dead band in the middle of your transmitter stick, which will force it to be at either plus or minus 15% throttle roughly to make it so that your quad, if you were flying one, would hover either upside down or right side up, depending on which you were position you were in last. So you actually want the soft, which allows it to go through the zero point of stopping so that your, ro your robot can actually, you know, stand still and actually be controllable at really low speeds instead of being forced to always have its motors spinning at one speed in a direction or another speed in the other direction all the time. So bidirectional software drive, normal otherwise, don't worry about the reversed ones because you can just swap the motor wires to reverse it later. Temperature protection. This is also pretty much what it says in the box. I would set it to around 110, 115, somewhere in there. You could set it as high as 255, but I think at that point you will have very well cooked everything. Um, the way that this works is a little bit less straightforward than it might sound though. It's not a pure cutoff. What actually happens is that when the temperature threshold is reached exactly, it will start to decrease the power sent to the motor. Once the temperature reaches 15 degrees above your set point, it will have reduced power to 25% of the original value that, was being, that would have been sent if it was not hitting the thermal threshold and you were sending the same throttle signal. So in other words, if you push the throttle to 100% and then you get to your temperature target, it will start to limit the throttle as the temperature continues to rise until once you are at 15 degrees over the temperature target, you are now only sending 25% of that throttle signal. I would leave this at around 110, like I said, and that should prevent your ESC from cooking itself or anything around it, hopefully. Low RPM power protect. Uh, the description for this says, power limiting for low RPMs can be enabled or disabled. Disabling it can be necessary in order to achieve full power on some low KV motors running on a low supply voltage. However, disabling it increases the risk of sync loss with the possibility of toasting the motor or ESC. I don't really understand what constitutes low voltage or low KV in their particular instance, but this 400 KV motor that I have was running just fine on uh, 6S and I tried running it on 3S and the maximum speed was severely limited, so I'm guessing if I had to actually run that motor on 3S, I would want to turn that off, but for pretty much any other purpose, you should leave it on. For any KV higher than probably 700 or so, just always leave it on. Low voltage protection also does what it says. This is a voltage per cell that you're setting as the voltage limit. I would prefer to set it to three volts per cell for a drive and maybe a bit higher, 3.1, 3.2, maybe even 3.3 volts per cell for a weapon if you are driving your robot in such a way like I am for division that the weapon motor could easily drain the battery in less than three minutes. So I leave it that so that the uh, weapon ESC has a higher cutoff because that way if the weapon dies I still have enough power to drive around for the remainder of the match and I won't just instantly lose. Otherwise, just leave them all at 3 volts if you have a big enough battery, and that should prevent you from absolutely destroying your LiPo. Brake on stop. So this 
sounds like it makes sense until you actually start playing with it and you realize what the hell there's a percentage what does percentage of stop mean um so what this essentially is is it's for rc airplanes with folding propellers the description says brake on stop can be set between one percent and a hundred percent or disabled when not disabled the given brake force will be applied when the throttle is zero for non-zero throttle this setting has no effect this feature is primarily intended for fixed wing crafts with folding propellers. There are cases where you may want this on, like maybe for a hammer bot to stop mid swing. The drive might be preferential, um, but I'm leaving it off for myself. For weapon, you definitely want to turn this off to avoid stalling the weapon, which could damage the ESC or motor with huge spikes in voltage. All right, so stall protection is something you just want to leave on because it prevents the motor from stalling out and it doesn't have any adverse effects. And then the damped mode, non-damped mode. So basically non-damped mode on enables regenerative braking, which allows your motor to regenerate some power when it spins down. Personally, I'm trying to leave that on. You could turn it off if you want your motor to freewheel more, but I don't think it particularly matters. And then sign modulation mode, literally it just makes, instead of a trapezoid wave, a sine wave signal sent to the motor. It's a bit more efficient. There's really no downside. So I would just turn it on and leave it on. Uh, so anything to do with beacon, the beacon volume, you can leave whatever. Beacon delay, you want to turn off. This is for if you lost your quad in the middle of a forest and it'll start beeping after a set amount of time and then beep really loudly so that you can come and find it. There's no point to doing this in a combat robot. And then startup beep volume. Don't set this too high because it actually sends pulses of energy to the motor and it could fry it if you go really high. So I just leave that around 50. This also will not matter at all unless you set music, in which case it does matter. Music editor can be pretty fun though. All right, that's everything needed for programming. Now on to the transmitter side. All right, before I plug in the battery and start all this mayhem, because these motors are probably gonna decide to roll themselves all over the place, let me explain my setup here. So I've got a receiver here, same one I use in Division, though this one I put a directed label on. This guy is a standard six channel receiver. I'm gonna be using four of those channels. And then you can see the BEC is plugged in here to the battery. Uh, put in input, but uh, you could put it to any of the empty channels um, This is simply a wiring squid that I wired together that splits out from one XT60 to four XT60s and one of these JST connectors for the BEC and Each of those is going to one of a pair of ESCs. So these two ESCs are both programmed in a weapon configuration with the fly weapon a INI file that I showed earlier these two are configured with a drive bidirectional uh, programming, so they will both allow me to reverse these motors for drive, and the center throttle position for these is the midpoint. So let's plug in the battery and see what happens. Sorry, but I do not have a tripod at the moment. I ordered one, but it hasn't arrived yet. All right, that was the sound of not one, not two, but four ESCs, all doing the intro to take on me, and also putting two beeps out that indicated that they both recognized they were plugged into a receiver and that that receiver was currently receiving a signal from the transmitter. These two are both set to be only on channel three. These two are set to be controlled by a mix so that they would be each side of drive. So they will both move when I move this stick, which would be channels one, and then this way would be two. So they spin the same way if I move that stick one way and the opposite way if I move it the other way. Well, not with the magnets stuck to each other, they don't, but... So yeah, that should give you the idea. 
So how did I achieve this? Well, it's a combination of the having bidirectional on these two, but not on these two, and programming settings on the transmitter. One of the trickiest parts of this actually was getting these guys to respond only to channel 3 and not to channel 4, because to enable them both to mirror each other, what I had to do is set it so that there was a mix from channel 3 to control what channel 4 did. But when I originally did that, I noticed when I went from side to side, this would do nothing, but this would ramp up only the one motor that was plugged into channel 4. And I'll show you how I was able to remedy that as well, to be able to run my weapon for the 12 pounder to run this saw with two motors at once, both doing the same exact thing, but not have the possibility of running one of them faster than the other. All right, so here, go into our settings menu. Um, so if we go down to RX setup, one important thing that you'll want, whoops, one important thing that you're going to want to do is make sure your fail safes are correct first off. So notice that channels one and two are set to 0% fail safe, whereas channel three is minus 100%. That's because the midpoint is zero, minus 100 and plus 100 are the extents. So for drive, you want a fail safe to be in the center position, which is 0%. For the weapon, you want minus 100%, which is the throttle all the way down. And we can illustrate this better by going into the display, which is in the other menu. So right now, this is what all the channels are receiving. So up on this stick goes pushes one and two forward, back on this stick pushes one and two backwards, left pushes them opposite directions, right pushes them opposite directions the other way. And then this stick, this does nothing. Whereas this pushes both three and four up uniformly. I'm going to quickly unplug the battery from this setup here so that I can illustrate this without the motors flying all over the table. All right, so. As I was saying before, now with the, this unplugged, push up on this, and it uniformly moves channels 1 and 2 together, and then the other way. So this is forwards, backwards, and then for left, opposite directions, right, opposite directions the other way. Left, right, left, right. Um, channels 3 and 4 are slaved both to this stick, with channel 4, which is originally the side to side, doing literally nothing. So to get this, first thing that you need to do um, for the drive is you're going to not go to mix, but rather to Elevon. So this is what you need to do to enable it so that one and two do what you want. So this pushing up and down and then left and right to make both motors forward, both backwards, and then opposite, opposite. Um, you may need to make this negative 100 or this negative 100. I think that that'll do basically the same thing, but I do believe you need one of them to be negative and the other positive. And then on top of that, when you first plug in your motors, they could be reversed and how it so forward and backward are correct, but left and right are wrong. And to fix that, you simply reverse channel one or channel two, try both and see which one works for you. But if you reverse both of them, then you probably just want to swap a wire on a motor or something. Either way, you'll be able, via a combination of reversing these or swapping motors, motor leads, to get them to both run the way that you want, with positive 100, negative 100, or what have you. For division, um, I can actually show you. So for division, So for division, I actually have negative 70% instead of negative 100%. That's to limit it so that it turns slower, because that way I can deal with the gyroscopic forces more easily. Um, you'll also notice with division and the display page, um, these channels are mixed the same exact way for brushed as they would be for brushless, except uh, they're doing seemingly the opposite thing, just because I have the motors configured to be running the same direction via the ESCs, and then I just reversed like I was talking about in here, whoops, I just reverse channel one to get them to behave the right way. Um, but either way, it works the same. And then 
channel three is controlling this, but channel four I didn't do anything with. That's because I'm only using one weapon motor in division, so that didn't matter. So to get the single uh, single stick to control two weapon motors, I'll show that now. Holding cancel to select is kind of back ass words, but you get used to it eventually. So what I had to do to basically make it so that the fourth the fourth channel does nothing is as simple as it was dual rate, I believe. Yes. So dual rating channels channel four to zero basically makes it so that no matter which direction you push the stick, it does literally nothing. And that way you can prevent one of the motors from doing anything different from the other after you establish the mix, which is just a normal mix, where channel three is the master, channel four is the slave, and it's simply a 100 positive, 100 negative with zero offset. So this makes it so that the sticks do the same exact thing, whereas the um, the dual rate on channel 4, this is what makes it so that this, this stick just doesn't do anything on its own anymore. So by doing those two things, I was able to get it so that pushing this stick up makes channel 4 do the exact same thing as channel 3 all the time, every time. This doesn't affect it at all, and thus you can control two motors simultaneously and mirror them without having the possibility of them ever running at different speeds. Thank you all for watching. Feel free to like, subscribe, and comment what ideas you would have for future videos. I should be getting a shipment of all the metal I ordered soon for the hobby weight, so in the near future I'm hoping to start machining those parts, but whether or not I'll have enough footage to put together a video on that for the next week is up to luck and how much time I have, so I would appreciate if you have ideas for other videos I could do in the interim, like this one, which was a suggestion by TML Robotics, so thank you for that, TML, and I look forward to you guys seeing the next one.